Welcome to Casio Chaos Theory, and welcome to this Casio Tone CTS-1000V News Alert Update video. I thought I was done and dusted with my S-1000V review videos, but just recently, Casio have released a firmware update for both the CTS-500 and the CTS-1000V. And some of my S-1000V criticisms that I mentioned in my conclusion episode have been addressed. OMG, does this mean I've become an influencer? What next, a Casio Chaos Theory TikTok account with daft videos? Let's move on. In this video, I will be covering updating the S1000V firmware, though it's likely that most of the process and feature upgrades, other than anything to do with vocal synthesis, will also apply to the CTS500. I will examine what this new firmware offers, show where to find the updated firmware, plus how to download it and prepare a USB flash drive for the update process, back up my own S1000V before installing the new firmware, then walk through the firmware update process with my own S1000V. After that, I will examine and demonstrate the updated features to see how much they improve the Casio tone. As this firmware update will affect my pros and cons list, as seen in my part nine conclusion episode, I will need to revisit this list after the update to see if the new firmware really has addressed some of my criticisms and then update my list accordingly. Each video segment will have a chapter marker, all list in the description box, so feel free to jump to whichever chapter you wish to watch. First of all, Let's look at the improvements that we get with firmware 1.02 by looking at the list on Casio's website. The first three updates on the list are what I'm most interested in, and the first of these updates shows that we can now change the MIDI in from port C to port A. This addresses one of my main criticisms of not being able to use the active DSPs over MIDI because they can only be accessed via port A a major improvement for external MIDI implementation. We can see this change on page five and seven in the updated MIDI implementation PDF manual available from the Casio website. There is also the ability to select registrations over MIDI, something that will greatly increase the S1000V's usefulness in a DAW setup. And you now have the ability to load in vocal synthesis files via a USB flash drive whereas before you had to exclusively use the mobile app to transfer these files to the Casio tone. You still need to use the mobile app to create and modify vocal synthesis files, though perhaps with these files being more easily accessible externally, maybe it's just a matter of time before Casio gives us a standalone computer-based vocal synthesis app, or maybe even a third-party app might become available. And the last two improvements look to be minor tweaks rather than anything major, so I'm not going to go into those unless they stand out in some way once I've installed the update. Before we start, we should double check the firmware version in our Casio tone to ensure that we know what version is currently installed. The steps to do this are shown on the official Casio update webpage and I'm now going to follow these steps to check my own S1000V. The first thing we need to do is turn the Casio tone on. And once it's booted up, I will press the menu button. Then I need to press the left arrow, press the settings button, press the left arrow again, and now the display shows that firmware version 01.01 .01 is installed. As you can see, my S1000V has the very first firmware installed, version 01.01, .01, so it's clearly a candidate for an update. As far as the update process goes, it all looks straightforward going by the details on the Casio website. You download a compressed zip file, unzip it, then place the update file in the root directory of a USB flash drive, then follow the instructions to update your Casio tone. We also need to take note of the what you need requirements shown on the website before proceeding. 
For the update, you will need a FAT formatted NAT FAT32 or XFAT USB flash drive with a capacity of between 1GB and 32GB. USB flash drives in non-FAT formats should first be formatted using the Windows formatting function with FAT specified as the file system. And note that this excludes quick formatting. I have this 32GB flash drive formatted as FAT32 and even though it already has files on it, this should be fine as the update file only needs to be placed in the root directory. You aren't making a bootable flash drive and this does make the update process easier, thankfully. Before we go any further, we now need to scroll to the bottom of the page and agree to the license agreement, a usual formality, so just click on the I agree button. We are now taken to the download section where you can select both the firmware update file and also the PDF guide. This is self-explanatory. Click on the links and the download should start and it should save to the downloads folder in your computer depending on your operating system. Once downloaded, go to the downloads folder to access them. Though in my case, I have already downloaded and moved them to my master hard drive and saved them in a folder for all things CTS-1000V. The next step is to unpack the downloaded zip file, and that creates a folder of the same name. And in that folder is a file called CTSV-0102 with the .upd file extension. This is the firmware update file that I will need to update my S1000V. Now I can open up my USB flash drive folder, which is drive F on my PC, ensure that I am in the root directory, and then I am going to drag and copy the update file to my USB flash drive. With that done, you can now see that the ctsv0102.upd update file is sitting in the root folder of my USB flash drive, and this flash drive is now ready to be inserted into the S1000V. Before we update the S1000V, as with any firmware update, we should back up all existing information first. This is to ensure that if anything goes wrong during the update process, we will have a backup of all existing files and information currently in the S1000V. You could use the same flash drive with the update file on it to do this, but to be on the safe side, it's best to use a separate flash drive, and I've got a separate one here, just in case the drive becomes corrupted during the update process. If you only have the one flash drive, then once you have backed up your S1000V, you could always copy the S1000V backup file to your computer's hard drive so that you will have a copy stored there if it's ever needed. And note that this is all done in the unlikely event of a worst case firmware update failure scenario, but it's always worth playing safe. With that being said, let me now insert this flash drive into my S1000V. And now I will turn on my S1000V. The next step is to back up all the contents of my Casio Tone to the inserted flash drive. And if you look on page 253 of the user guide, you can see all the different file saving operations available. We are going to choose the last option, which is all data above plus all lyric tones. And that will save everything to a single file with a .dal extension. I will do this by going to the menu, Scroll to Media, select Save, scroll to the next page and select All Data. And here I can choose my own name for the backup file. So I will delete the default file name and put in CCT1000V. Hit the Back button once I'm done with entering the backup file name. Press confirm. The S1000V asked, am I sure? I am, so I will press the yes button. Now the S1000V is saving a backup file to my USB flash drive. 
and this should take around two minutes. With that done, I will turn off the S1000V, remove the flash drive and put it somewhere safe. I can also show you the backup file I just saved by opening up the flash drive in my PC. I will be able to find the backup file in the music that folder, which is the folder that the Casio tone will use for all normal data loading and saving operations. In that folder, there is the backup file which is saved, CCT1000V. With my S1000V backed up, I can now start the firmware update process. Casio recommends that the update should be carried out using the AC adapter, which makes sense, but I've installed a set of batteries in the keyboard just in case there's a power cut. With batteries in and the AC adapter connected, I can now insert my other flash drive with the firmware update file on it. Ensure that your S1000V is switched off before you do this to be on the safe side and also because we need to turn on the S1000V while simultaneously holding down some of the buttons to enter the update mode. As my S1000V is switched off, I will insert the flash drive with the firmware update on it. And now I can start the firmware update process by following the instructions found on the Casio website. To boot into the update mode, we need to press and hold down these three right hand buttons below the LCD screen while simultaneously pressing the power button. As you can see, we are now in update mode. Then we need to press the next button below the LCD screen. Note that when I press the next button at this point, I got a message stating no media. I waited a little while, but as nothing seemed to happen, I pressed the next button again, and it showed the setup screen. However, after a short while, the message to select the update file appeared. I don't know if I needed to wait a little longer when no media was displayed, or if hitting the next button again made it find the update file. Or maybe the flash drive was still going through the mounting process. Anyway, there is only one update file to select from. CTSV0102.gpd. This is the update file we want, so I will press OK. The S1000V asks me if I am sure, and I am, so I will press the S button. And now the S1000V will go through the update process, showing check, write, and verify at various points. This process took approximately 11 minutes to complete, so take the opportunity to grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee and put your feet up. Once complete appears, press any button other than the power button and the S1000V switches off. I will now take out the USB flash drive. Then press the power button to switch the CTS1000V back on and check the firmware version. I will use the same process as I showed previously, so I won't elaborate on the steps. And after navigating through the menu, there you can see my S1000V now has firmware version 01.02 successfully installed. With the firmware updated in my S1000V, let's explore the changes and improvements. Also, bear in mind that I'm going to record all the audio with my lavalier mic, whereas I normally record the instrument audio and my voiceover mic with a DAW in the computer behind me. But I need to use the DAW to record and play back the MIDI to demonstrate what is happening with the new firmware update. As such, the instrument audio won't be brilliant, but it's what you see and hear happening that is important for this video. For high quality audio demonstrations of the S1000V, please feel free to check out my other videos in this series. Now, before we start though, we need to change the MIDI port to allow the active DSPs to be used over MIDI. And to do this, we are going to go to the menu, 
Then we find setting. Then we scroll somewhere. Where are you? There's something to do with MIDI. MIDI. MIDI control port C, and I need port A. So I'm going to change it to port A. And that's done. We now have port A. And with the MIDI port changed, I'm now going to select a registration I have previously set up that uses active DSPs. And then I'm going to record the MIDI being sent out to the S1000V into the Reaper DAW. Let me show you the active DSPs in use here. And to do that, I go to menu, show the active DSPs. And right now, let me go there. I've got a layer tone here. And upper one is using LFO wire active DSP and upper two is using LFO wire active DSP. And now let's record something into Reaper and see what happens when we play it back. So I'm gonna get Reaper started. Okay, we're all ready to go here. I'm going to record all the MIDI onto one track just to keep things nice and simple. So everything, all 16 tracks, or however many tracks it's gonna record, MIDI tracks will be on one single track in Reaper. So press record. And we are on registration 7.1 and let's play something. And that was that tone, patch, whatever, with active DSPs on it. Let me press start, I'm gonna save all. I'm going to rewind. Got to route the MIDI back out to the Casio, because otherwise I'd have got MIDI loop back during recording. And let's play it back and see what we get. It's coming up. As you can see in here, that recording played back perfectly. I was able to record my S1000V's MIDI with active DSPs engaged into Reaper and then send that MIDI back out from Reaper to the S1000V and have it played back with the same active DSPs in operation. This is great news as one of my main criticisms with the original S1000V was it not being able to use the active DSPs over MIDI. However, there is still a small MIDI limitation with active DSPs over MIDI, and that occurs if you assign active DSP parameters to the assignable knobs. Unfortunately, when assigned to active DSP parameters, the assignable knobs do not transmit MIDI data. Let me show you what happens when I try and record this same registration and tweak the knobs during the recording. Okay, let me go back to Reaper. Let me rewind this. And let me just get rid of that. And we're ready to go. So I'm gonna hit record again. And this time I'm gonna play some of the, with the active DSPs and I'm gonna tweak the knobs. That's enough of that for now. Let me stop the recording. I'm gonna say save all that, rewind it, route the MIDI back out to the Casio, like so. And now we're gonna play it back. As you can hear, the active DSP parameter changes did not get recorded over MIDI because what is happening is that the active DSP parameters will always be at wherever they were last adjusted to. However, you can still tweak the active DSPs in real time while MIDI has been sent to the keyboard and if you were to record the audio while you do that, you would be able to record these changes orally. Let's see that in action. Let me go back to Reaper. 
So I'm going to play the same track we just heard. I'm going to play it back again, except this time, while it's playing the MIDI, I'm going to tweak the controls. So let's press play, and let's see what we can do. This assignable knob MIDI limitation only seems to apply to the active DSPs because you can assign the knobs to all the other parameters such as reverb, filter cutoff, resonance, and modulation, etc. And you can record those knob changes via MIDI, plus you can have the active DSPs in operation as well. Let me record a registration that has the knobs assigned to the filter cutoff, the resonance, and the modulation and that also has the LFO wah active DSPs engaged. So I'm gonna set that to registration 7.2, which I know which one that is, and I'm going to do some recording again. So let me come back here. Let me get rid of that old recording. And I think we're ready, rewind. Okay, let me hit record. And let's see what we get this time. That's the active DSP. That's the filter cutoff. And there we've got modulation. Okay, let's stop that. Save all. Rewind, route back out to Casio. And let's play it back, see what we see what we get here. And now it's playing. Let's be tweaking the filter cut off. There's modulation. Modulation off. Modulation back on again. Okay, let me stop. There you can see and hear quite clearly the real-time changes I made using these signable knobs recorded into Reaper and played back to the S1000V. But as said, the assignable knobs do not transmit MIDI data when assigned to the active DSP parameters, though for all other parameters, they do. Next up, we are going to show that registration changes can be recorded via MIDI, another welcome firmware update. I will do this by changing through some registrations during a recording and then play the MIDI recording back into the S1000V. So let me go over here. Let's get this recorded. And let's come back like this. So I'm gonna start off on registration 7.4. 7.3. 7.4. Go back to 7.1. Active DSP is on that. And back to 7.4. Okay, let's stop. And save all that. Rewind it. Route back out to the Casio. Let's see what happens. First registration. The second registration. First reg 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 registration, no active DSPs. Okay, let me stop this. 
note that the S1000V will only play back tones with active DSPs over MIDI if the active DSPs are currently activated on the keyboard before sending MIDI to the S1000V. As the last registration that I selected before I stopped recording didn't have active DSPs, even though I changed for a registration during recording that did use them, it did not play back that particular registration with active DSPs. On the flip side, if active DSPs are currently active when you send MIDI to the keyboard, even when you change registrations over MIDI, the active DSPs do not disengage. If I select registration 7.1, which is already selected, and then send MIDI to the keyboard, and then change registrations over MIDI, all the subsequent registrations will have these active DSPs affecting them, even if the active DSPs were not saved as part of that particular registration. I can show this to you. I'm gonna play back the recording we just used, and also show you that the keyboard has the active DSPs currently selected. I'm going to play back the same recording which used only one of the active DSPs in a registration. In this scenario, you heard that the registration selected over MIDI had the same active DSPs applied to them, even if the active DSPs weren't part of the registration being selected. So there are still some limitations when it comes to using active DSPs over MIDI, though it would mostly only be problematic in a live performance situation where someone may be sending MIDI to the S1000V that required registration changes in real time and if some of those registrations required active DSPs. In a studio environment, it would be much less a problem as you would likely multi-track the part and would select and record each registration on a single track. But the fact that we can now have those powerful active DSPs active when sending MIDI to the S1000V, that is a very big and welcome improvement. The last firmware change that we're going to look at is the ability to load in vocal synthesis files via a USB flash drive. Previously, vocal synthesis files could only be sent to the S1000V by transferring them from the mobile app. This made archiving these files elsewhere and also sharing them with others somewhat cumbersome. Now, it is a lot easier to have a library of vocal synthesis files stored on your computer and to be able to load them into the S1000V without the need of the mobile app. The first thing we need to do then is to create a new vocal synthesis file that we can use to demonstrate this. So let me grab my phone and get this process started. I'm gonna create some lyrics by opening up the Lyric Creator. Press the plus button to work, will you? Add new lyrics, new, select microphone input, and start input. I have updated my Casio with firmware 0102. I think you should update your Casio too. Okay, now I think we managed to do that we capture it press end input and I kind of click done oh I didn't like this I got to change this here because it doesn't like numbers I think that should do the trick hopefully it's click done oh I put some stuff in there I didn't need to do I'm going to edit that now we've done it click done Okay, so let's save it. I'm going to call this rubbish. 
can't spell to save my life. Rubbish lyrics. Do that. Okay. I've now saved it. By the FCC right there. Rubbish lyrics. And I'm now going to send it to my email. And interesting important thing here is I thought you'd have to press share because transfer was being used to transfer lyrics from the, the app to the keyboard. Or at least that's what I thought it was for. And I thought share would be like with social media, you can share it externally, but it doesn't work. If you use that, it's only meant for sharing within the app to another app. And I didn't, it's in the instructions, but don't use share. Use transfer, click on transfer, but we need to click transfer to other. That's the important thing here. So I'm gonna click that. And then we change the choir group to choir trio. Always sounds good. Now I click transfer. And I've got a choice now how I'm going to share it. So I'm going to send it via email. I'm going to send it to there, one of my other email addresses. I'm going to click send. And that should have done the trick. Now we've created a new vocal synthesis file and sent it via email, let me go and open up my email and download the file onto my computer. So I'm at my computer, if I shrink that window, and there we have rubbish lyrics. Okay, it's got an attachment, I'm gonna download it. And there it is. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to download it onto this flash drive. So let me put this flash drive in there. So that the MIDI cable connected. This is going to be fun. Okay, let me show in folder. There we have rubbish lyrics. So what else do I need to do? I need to find my USB flash drive which already has a music that folder. So I, I try to make the, the scaling large so it will show it better on a computer. And I'm going to move my downloaded Lyric file into my USB flash drive. Move here. This is USB flash drive F. I've moved it into the music that folder right there. So we now have the Lyric file I created, sent via email, downloaded, and I've now put it onto the flash drive, and I can put that back into the S1000V well, and see if we can load up the lyrics. So let's do that. Let me eject this and put it up. And I'm now going to take this to the S1000V. So I'm now going to put this into my S1000V, this flash drive probably best to make sure the S1000 V is switched off just to be on the safe side. You probably can't do a hot swap, but I'm not. Let me plug it in. Right, now we've got the USB in. Let me turn on the Casio tone. And let it boot up and it will have to, to mount. I'm assuming it will mount. Yes, it's mounting. Sorry, we have to wait a little bit. Ah, now it's mounted. Okay, finally. So, to, to load in our file, we're going to go to the menu. And we need to find the media. There, and we're going to be loading. And this is something new. This is the new thing, vocal synth. I think you can still see that up there. Select vocal synth. Lyric tone, because that's what I recorded. And there we can see rubbish lyrics, because they're rubbish. I'm going to select it and I'm going to put it into 110, which is currently empty. Select. Am I sure? Yes, I am. And that was done. Nice and simple. So I have to go back up. We're in the media section at the moment. Go back, go back, exit, lyrics. Oh, I've got to go all the way up to 100. Where are you? 110. Rubbish lyrics. Now this should be the lyrics I've just put in here. I've just recorded in the app, then emailed it to myself, downloaded the file 
on my computer, put it onto a free USB flash drive, put the flash drive into the S1000V, and now loaded those files into my S1000V. Let's see what it's going to sound like. Wow, wow, <laughs> that all went nice and smoothly. And we now have the ability to load our vocal synthesis files via a USB flash drive. Something that I certainly believe will make it easier and more flexible when working with the S1000V's vocal synthesis feature. As part of my firmware update conclusion, I now need to revisit my pros and cons list that I presented in the part 9 conclusion episode of this S1000V review series to see if this new firmware update has changed anything on that list. The pros list remains the same because the update hasn't radically changed or added any new features, rather it addressed some of the criticisms and lacking in some existing features. Reassessing the cons list, I would make the following amendments. MIDI limitations can now be changed to minor MIDI limitations. No active DSPs via MIDI, I can remove that from the list entirely. Vocal synth app only, I will change this to lyric creating is app only. For now, this is how my S1000V cons list, in my humble opinion, currently stands. Even after updating to firmware 01.02, there are still some MIDI limitations, but the port changeability allowing active DSPs over MIDI and being able to select registration via MIDI are welcome improvements. As I demonstrated, the active DSPs via MIDI are available with the live keyboard only. This means that you can set up the S1000V with an active DSP registration or tone already engaged, and if you send MIDI to it, the S1000V will play the keyboard exactly as it is currently, active DSPs included. If the keyboard does not have active DSPs currently in operation, you cannot select a registration over MIDI, the one with active DSPs in it, and send MIDI to play the S1000V with active DSPs active. And when the K1 to K3 knobs are assigned to active DSP parameters, when recording MIDI from the S1000V into a DAW, these knobs do not output MIDI CC data and they cannot be recorded and played back into the Casio tone. However, when assigned to the filter, envelopes, modulation, and system effects, the knobs will still record and play back the MIDI CC via a DAW. Regarding the vocal synthesis feature, this remains a mobile app only when it comes to creating lyrics. You can still only create and modify vocal synthesis files via the mobile app. But being able to transfer externally, archive externally, and also loading vocal synthesis files from a flash drive means that it is now much easier to work with these files. It also means that if or when, please Catio, a computer-based app becomes available, you won't need to use the mobile app at all to create, work, and load vocal synthesis files into your S1000V. One common criticism that hasn't been addressed, and I hope may still be addressed with a future update, is the ability to name your registrations, something that, on paper, looks to be relatively simple to apply and would make operating, using, and working with the Casio tone so much easier. Overall, this latest Casio Tone CTS-1000V firmware update has most definitely improved an already fantastic, if quirky, keyboard. If you are still running firmware 01.01, .01, I heartily recommend updating to firmware 01.02. In closing, I want to say thank you to Casio for listening to their user base and for implementing some needed improvements to the S1000V and also the S500. I hope Casio will continue to listen to and address any future criticisms of their products with further firmware updates as needed. Maybe following the path of companies like Novation, who continue to support their products, often many years after they were first released, sometimes adding totally new features over a series of updates. 
This is how you build a loyal customer base, because if you give long-term support to your customers, they will likely stay with you for the long term too. And while we are on this subject of long-term support for older products via firmware updates, Casio, is there any chance you could update the firmware in the XWPD1 so it can send and receive MIDI clock? It's a super little box of tricks, but it's crippled because it can't synchronize with anything else because of no clock syncability. Well, I can but ask. Thanks as always for watching. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And remember, keep it Casio and update your firmware in your S1000 and S502.